What's up everybody? My name is Dr. Garrett Rossi and I am a board certified psychiatrist who makes mental health content here on YouTube. Now if you're new to this channel, I would love to make you a member of the community. It really helps me to know that this information is valuable to you. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for all of the love and support. Now, I want you to take a second and think. If you're a prescriber or if you're somebody who takes medication for bipolar depression, when was the last time you prescribed or took the medication for lansipine and fluoxetine as a combination pill? This medication was FDA approved in 2003 and really has fallen off substantially as a medication treatment for bipolar depression. Now, although it's fallen off, although it hasn't been popular for psychiatrists like myself to prescribe or for patients to take, it's probably worth a little bit of a discussion here and we can understand more about this medication combination, why it works, what was the FDA approvals for it, and how come it's not prescribed very often clinically. So the topic of today's discussion is going to be the OG of bipolar depression, and that is the orlanzapine fluoxetine combination pill, Symbiax. Okay guys, so let's do a brief introduction to both of these medications. Now, the FDA approved the combination of orlanzapine and fluoxetine for two things. First, in 2003, they approved this medication combination for a very difficult to treat disorder, and that is the depressive episodes associated with bipolar 1 disorder. So we're not talking bipolar 2 disorder, it's tested primarily in bipolar 1 disorder, specifically the depressive episodes. Now many people forget that there's actually a second FDA approval here that nobody talks about really, and that is for treatment-resistant depression. So for those patients who have failed more than two trials of medication for, for depression, you could potentially jump to the orlanzapine fluoxetine combo and it would have FDA approval, so you would be on evidence prescribing this. Now, obviously this medication consists actually of two separate medications, both of which have been proven to be effective in their respective areas, right? The first one being the atypical dopamine blocking medication, or lansipine, and the second one being the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, fluoxetine. Again, both are very effective for what they do in their specific areas of use specifically depression psychosis. Anyway, many people would consider orlanzapine to be the best antipsychotic that's not named clozapine. So if you haven't seen my video on the best antipsychotic in the world, then check that out because I detail the medication clozaril or clozapine, which is known to be the most effective of all medications. Now, a lot of this information comes from a specific study, and that study was a National Institute of Mental Health study that spanned over a number of years, and it was called the KT study. You can, I'll link it up in my blog post, where orlanzapine proved to be more effective or superior to other dopamine blocking medications. So it has some evidence, and this is an often cited study in psychiatry, that proves that orlanzapine is more effective than other dopamine blockers. Now, it's true. It has good efficacy. It has once daily dosing at bedtime. It helps improve sleep in some cases, and it has a low risk for cardiac conduction and abnormalities, specifically QTC prolongation. However, the side effect profile in my mind limits it to a second line option, and that is because there's high risk for weight gain as well as metabolic side effects, making this a second line option. Now, I work inpatient, and often my residents will come to me with a difficult case, and they'll say, I want to start orlanzapine right away. And I'll usually caution those residents and say, hey, maybe we should think about a different medication because the side effect profile of orlanzapine is quite severe, number one, so people may be inclined not to continue the medication due to side effects. And it also leaves you with only one medication option should this fail. So if you believe the KD study and you say that this is the most effective medication other than clozapine, well then your next logical conclusion is that if somebody fails this medication, they should then probably take clozapine, since that's the only medication that's proven to be more effective. A little bit of a discussion there. Now, fluoxetine is an antidepressant, right? It's an SSRI. It has a broad spectrum of indications. It's used in more than just depression. It's used in OCD. It's used in certain eating disorders, specifically bulimia. It has a long track record of good safety profile as well as effectiveness in the treatment of depression. So that is one of the reasons why it was chosen here to be combined in this population. And I'll also say that this is a medication that's often used in the child adolescent population as well. 
Now, the main disadvantage to fluoxetine is that it has some drug-drug interactions that can occur, and that can be a concern if a patient is on multiple medications. All right, guys, let's talk a little bit about dosing. Now, many people think you can just make this medication up by combining a generic orlanzapine pill with a generic fluoxetine pill. Now, I always tell my residents and other clinicians to be cautious about this for a number of reasons. The first reason being that it's very hard to make the dosage combinations that are in the fixed dose orlanzapine fluoxetine combination capsule out of those medications. And I'll explain a little bit more about what I mean here. So if we take orlanzapine, for example, and we look at what are the commercially available doses of the medication, you can get it in a 2.5 milligram tab. You can get it in a five milligram tab, a seven and a half milligram tab, a 10 milligram tab, a 15 milligram tab, and then finally a 20 milligram tab. But what you're going to see is that is not the proper dose or the dose that's in this fixed combination pill. So the fixed orlanzapine fluoxetine combination pill actually comes in a few different doses as well. And we're, when we're talking about these, I'm gonna first state the dose of orlanzapine, then the dose of fluoxetine in the combination pill. So for the orlanzapine fluoxetine combination pills, it's three milligrams of orlanzapine and 25 milligrams of fluoxetine, or it would be six milligrams of orlanzapine with 25 milligrams of fluoxetine, or 12 milligrams of orlanzapine with 25 milligrams of fluoxetine. There are also higher doses, so you can have 50 milligrams of fluoxetine combined with either six or 12 milligrams of orlanzapine. So when we think about this for a second, you can see it would be very hard to make a dose of three milligrams or a dose of six milligrams with the currently commercially available orlanzapine doses. And the same would go for fluoxetine, which is usually 10 or 20 milligram doses that are available. And what I also want to caution you guys about is that when they did these studies for the FDA approval, when they studied this medication in bipolar one depression, as well as treatment resistant depression, they used the fixed dose combination pill. And so we don't know whether or not combining fluoxetine and orlanzapine individually actually works. We know the combination pill works, but we're not really sure about whether or not when you break these medications into separate forms, they actually do what they're supposed to do to treat bipolar depression and or to treat treatment resistant depression. So how do we traditionally start the orlanzapine fluoxetine combination pill? What you would normally do is prior to starting the medication, you would want to get a baseline weight and waist circumference of the patient as well as blood pressure. As far as labs go, you're gonna to wanna to order two specific labs. You're gonna want a fasting glucose as a baseline as well as a fasting lipid profile. As we know, orlanzapine can cause metabolic side effects, so we want to be monitoring those and we want to have a baseline to compare it to. If you're starting this medication, the typical dosing is six milligrams of orlanzapine with 25 milligrams of fluoxetine in the combination pill, would be started at bedtime with once daily dosing, which makes it very convenient for the patient to take. Of course, it's also taken at night, which is nice. Uh, if there's any sedation associated with the orlanzapine dose, then the person will be able to sleep through it, and they'll be tired when they're supposed to be tired, which makes sense to me. Now, the dose can be increased as needed to find a clinical relevance or a clinical efficacy. You can go up to the 6 milligram or 12 milligram orlanzapine combination pill, along with either 25 or 50 of fluoxetine depending on clinical response. So that's typically how you would start the medication and the way in which you would dose it initially. Let's talk a little bit about cost as well as side effects. So starting with the cost, the combination pill is going to cost more money because this is a, not a brand name, it's still, it's actually a generic, but it still is pricier than either medication alone. So according to GoodRx on my end, I saw that this medication can cost anywhere from 140 to $150 per month for the six milligram slash 25 milligram combination pill. Now, if we compare that to the five milligram orlanzapine pill, which can be obtained from your pharmacy for a cost of $9 per month and the 20 milligram fluoxetine pill, which can be obtained from the pharmacy for $4 a month, it's clearly more expensive. Now, Let's talk a little side effects because this is important and we kind of hit on the big ones for olanzapine already. We talked about the weight gain and metabolic side effects. The other things that can happen is people can feel more tired on the medication 
and that is dose related, so we want to be careful with that. So that can happen as well. We also could see other things like dry mouth, which is dose related as well, constipation due to the anticholinergic effects of orlanzapine, weight gain we talked about. Now this can be very, very common. Up to 40% 40, 40 of people who take the medication can gain some weight and the weight gain can be substantial in some cases, anywhere from 10 to 30 pounds. It can also increase somebody's appetite as well as the, run the risk of EPS, which is dose related and very rare in my opinion. I see very little EPS on orlanzapine clinically, but it can happen. Now, when we're talking about the fluoxetine medication or the fluoxetine part of this combination pill, we can see other types of side effects, the main ones being nausea, because you have lots of serotonin receptors in your gut, and they're going to be activated by this increased serotonin availability, causing nausea, diarrhea, as the most common GI side effects. You can also see nervousness, and that's because this medication tends to be activating, and that's a good thing usually if you're depressed, not such a good thing if you have bad anxiety. You can have abnormal dreams. You can also have weight loss with this medication. It's been known to cause anorexia in some cases. I'd say that's very rare. I'd say there's a maybe a little bit more propensity for some weight gain clinically from what I've observed. Increased sweating, tremor, sexual side effects is a big one for any of the SSRI medications. We always want to talk about that and know how to treat it should it come up rash and headaches being two other potential side effects. Now, in rare cases, this can increase your risk for bleeding, and that is because there are serotonin receptors on your platelets, and it can, and when it's combined with things like NSAIDs, it can be an issue. Now, the other thing that I wanna point out in the elderly, there can be this thing called syndr syndrome of inappropriate ADH release, and this can cause hyponatremia. So you wanna be careful in your older patients and make sure that you're watching a BMP and their sodium levels. So I don't have a whole lot to say about the mechanism that I haven't said elsewhere. What I can say is that orlanzapine is primarily a D2 and as well as 5-HT2A antagonist or blocker. So it's gonna block D2 receptors as well as blocking 5-HT2A receptors. And fluoxetine on the other hand, as we know, is a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. It also has some other activity as well but primarily it's serotonin reuptake inhibition that is the mechanism responsible for its antidepressant effects. Now, orlanzapine is metabolized primarily by cytochrome P450, 1A2, and 2D6. That's probably not a super important detail for most of you guys, but anyway, it's here. Fluoxetine, on the other hand, is metabolized primarily by 2D6, so cytochrome P450, 2D6. It also acts as a potent inhibitor of cytochrome 2C9 as well as 2C19, and it can inhibit cytochrome P450, 2D6 as well. The important point I wanna make here is that the half-life of fluoxetine is very important in this combination drug, and that is because the half-life of fluoxetine is four to six days, and the metabolite, norofluoxetine, is actually nine days. So half-life is very long. And what happens when somebody stops taking the medication? Well, when somebody stops taking this medication, you're going to have orlanzapine being cleared quite rapidly from the body, and you're going to have fluoxetine sticking around for much longer because of its half-life. Now what that's going to do is that's going to expose this bipolar one disorder patient to an antidepressant medication without a mood stabilizing element. That could be a big problem that can lead to mood destabilization as well as the induction of mania. So if you are using this medication, you want to be careful when you're going to stop it because there is that risk that the person will be exposed to antidepressant without a mood stabilizing medication. Let's talk briefly about the studies that led to the FDA approval. And these are the ones that lend the evidence to saying that orlanzapine fluoxetine combination is superior to either medication alone or placebo in both treatment-resistant depression and bipolar one depression. So the studies that led to the 2003 approval of the orlanzapine and fluoxetine combination pill for bipolar one depression were short in duration. So we should note that these were eight week studies. There was a total of 833 patients who were diagnosed with bipolar one disorder, and they were randomized to receive either placebo, the orlanzapine fluoxetine combination, or orlanzapine alone. And what was interesting about the study was one specific finding, and that is that 
people who were on either orlanzapine fluoxetine combination or orlanzapine alone actually showed significant reductions in their depressive symptoms as early as one week into the study. So this is pretty rapid onset of antidepressant effects. And what we can say about that is that clearly the early onset antidepressant effects were related more to the orlanzapine treatment than the fluoxetine treatment. So orlanzapine seems to work and pretty rapidly for depression, whether you're taking it with the fluoxetine combination or alone. Now, what was more interesting here is that after four weeks, we started to see the significant separation between the orlanzapine fluoxetine combination and orlanzapine alone. So at this point, at four weeks, orlanzapine fluoxetine combination demonstrated superiority over orlanzapine alone, and that continued for the remaining four weeks of the study. In the end, what were the final results? Well, what we saw was based on their remission criteria, 24.5% of patients receiving the placebo actually achieved remission. So that's pretty good. You know, it's a high placebo rate, honestly. 25% of people who were in the study achieved remission. Now, as far as the orlanzapine alone group, 32.8% of people achieved remission. And in the orlanzapine fluoxetine combination, almost 50%, 48.8% to be exact, achieved remission. Now, the studies were a little bit different in 2009 that led to the that led to the approval for treatment-resistant depression. Now, what happened here was they looked at two studies, two eight-week studies, again, short in duration, so we have to be mindful of that. And in these two studies, we looked at both the orlanzapine fluoxetine combination as well as orlanzapine alone and fluoxetine alone in this group of patients. Now, they used doses that ranged anywhere from 6 to 18 milligrams of orlanzapine and 25 to 50 milligrams of fluoxetine. The end result of these two studies was that they saw a 40% of patients on the orlanzapine fluoxetine combination responded to therapy versus 30% and 26% in those receiving fluoxetine or orlanzapine monotherapy alone. The starting dose in this study was a little bit lower at 6 milligrams and 25 milligrams for the combination pill, and that can be titrated, according to these authors, up to a maximum dose of 18 milligrams slash 75 milligrams if tolerated and titrated to clinical effectiveness. Okay guys, so let's wrap the video here. What can we say about this orlanzapine fluoxetine combination medication for the treatment of either bipolar 1 depression and or treatment resistant depression? We can say that based on these short studies that gained FDA approval, these medications do work and are effective for the treatment of these disorders. They were significantly better than either the individual medications alone or placebo in the cases of the FDA approved studies. Now, does that mean a lot of people are on this medication? Again, I think clinically it's largely fallen out of favor, and that's because of the side effect profile of orlanzapine alone in these cases. It's not exactly a very friendly medication to use if you're concerned about metabolic side effects, weight gain, etc. So this medication has largely fallen out of favor. However, I think it's something we should keep in our back pocket because there is evidence to support its use in bipolar 1 depression, which is notoriously difficult to treat, as well as treatment-resistant depression, which in its name has says all that needs to be said, right? Which is that it is very difficult to treat. So we should keep these on hand. I wouldn't necessarily say they are first-line options for me clinically, but they do. this does remain an option should I find myself in a bind. Now, if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to the channel. It really does help me to know that this information is valuable to you, and I will see you in the next video.